Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Behringer Neutron. That's right, we've managed to get hold of uh, one of the final models before production. There are a few tweaks apparently, but this is it. It's a desktop analog synthesizer that is not a Behringer clone. Uh, we've seen a hell of a lot of those being announced, but not so many being made. This is actually a thing and is actually, I guess, the third of the Behringer synthesizers. But this has been designed by the, from the ground up by the guys at Manchester, uh, the Midas engineers, who are pretty awesome uh, analog engineers. And we've seen their work before in the DeepMind 12. The Neutron is the same form factor as the D again, so it's this sort of desktop thing, but you can also uh, mount it in Eurorack, it will work that way. Uh, but the big difference, it's got this massive patch bay on it. And I like the fact that the patch bay is on the right. Uh, it's a bit controversial because some people say you should have the patch points underneath all the controls. But the advantage of this is if you get a massive nest of cables, you can still see the synth and you can still operate it. So what do we get? Two analog oscillators. These are 3340 oscillators, which are the Curtis chips that Behringer now manufacture themselves and in fact provide to other manufacturers too. Uh, we've got a two pole Moffat filter, which is a very unique sound. It's multi-mode filter, but it doesn't sound like a two-pole at all. It's got quite a lot of power. Uh, then we've got a digital LFO. This is one of the only things that is digital, uh, which goes very high into the audio rates. We've got an analog BBD delay. We've got uh, analog overdrive, two analog envelopes, uh, attenuators, slew rate limiter and portamento, sample and hold, output. Uh, did I mention the drive? Yes, the drive has also got some tone as well. All of this is kind of pre-wired to work in a standard format. You don't need to get patching to make a sound. So taking a look at the connections, we've got 12 volt DC input, power supply included. Then we've got a little power switch. We've got a USB connectivity, which is for MIDI only. Uh, MIDI through port, which is nice to see. And then these dip switches set the MIDI channel. A little bit fiddly, but uh, at least you don't have to do it in software. Uh, quarter inch jack headphone output with separate volume quarter inch output and a quarter inch input and this little sort of boot port. Uh, you put, put a paper clip or something in there and that's for loading different versions of firmware. I've tried this once because uh, I updated the firmware before the review and it was pretty painless. So let's take a look at the oscillators. Uh, I'm going to listen to oscillator two because I've got the direct output patched into the scope. Uh, and what's interesting about this is at this point here, uh, we've got the tone control, which does actually affect the tonal characteristics of that oscillator quite a lot. So even before we get into the filter, we've got this kind of the potential. If I add this at 12 o'clock, what we're actually watching here is the uh, shape of the scope. This is the raw oscillator output. So this is the uh, sine wave. And you can see there's a really, I mean, I'm probably not gonna pick that up on uh, YouTube, but masses the fundamental is very strong in that, so you get a lot of uh, doof and weight. Uh, this control here actually blends between the waves. Now you can set this to switch because obviously sometimes you get you end up in the middle. So this is a cross between the saw and the the, the, the sine and the triangle. So we'll come up to triangle wave. It's a nice clean shape and again a good solid thunk down there on the fundamental. And we come up to the sawtooth. We get that right on. See, it's a little bit difficult to get actually pure when you've got it in blend mode, but you know, you do it by ear. Again, really nice shape. And if we go back towards the triangle, we end up in sort of shark tooth territory. So we can get a blend of waves. And then we come up to the square wave. Now the shape will begin to have an effect. It's got a nice sound to the pulse width, and it will go through zero. Um, if we come back out wide, we can see that attenuator two is actually normaled from the LFO and sends an amount of signal to vary the uh, pulse width of the uh, the wave. We can also modulate the shape if we really wanted to. So if I just bring this up now. get that kind of through zero sort of vibe. And then obviously we can modulate that with whatever shape we want on that LFO, which indeed goes right up into audio rates, just in case you were wondering. 
Final wave is a kind of folded type of wave. It's a sort of square wave derivative. So it starts off at roughly square wave with a few sort of stray harmonics. And then as we bring it round, we get this kind of interesting doubling or folding of the wave, which introduces all these massive harmonics. And again, we can modulate that. It's quite interesting with a square wave. Again, another interesting kind of uh, tonal possibility that we get. But it's worth mentioning that if we take this down an octave, we can get some really sort of harmonically rich low end sounds. Another thing we should look at is we've got oscillator sync. Uh, before we do that, we should mention what the range is. We've got 32, 16, 8, and then this. Uh, fourth mode, which is a super wide mode, which basically, if I go to a, a, a sawtooth, goes right past audio rate, right down into LFO territory. So you could actually use one of these as an LFO if you so wish. We've also got the option to uh, sync the waves, pressing the oscillator sync. If I go to square wave, you'll be able to hear it better. Changing. Uh, one other thing, we can go into paraphonic mode. If I just get these down to roughly sort of mid range, uh, try and get them tuned up. So we can play that in kind of paraphonic mode. Obviously they share the same VCA and the same VCF, so you're not gonna get uh, note re-triggers for each one. So if I just now bring the second oscillator in, I've got them both on square wave. One is an octave higher, and a bit of modulation of that pulse width. And I'm just adjusting the tone in the overdrive section because the tone affects the overall sound without actually adding the drive in. some really nice combinations between those two oscillators. It's actually, you know, it's quite, it's not often you come across synthesizers that have something about just the raw oscillators, but I'm glad to say that the Neutron does have that, and that's, I guess, down to the 3340s, and they may have tweaked the way that they're presented in some way, which gives us a little bit of added flavor. But whatever they've done, it does sound actually pretty nice. Right, so let's get into what this can do Let's make a bass sound. I've got this sequence here running. If I just play. In hold. I've got the filter. It's just a square wave with a bit of modulation. Now I'm gonna bring in a bit of modulation, a bit of resonance. And you hear that bottom end is just monster. Now if we start bringing in some drive, I have to jump take the level down and bring the drive into it. I mean, that is... It's massive. I mean, I'm a bit worried about the neighbours because, I mean, I've got the speakers here on full range. I sometimes roll the bottom end off them, but it's absolutely thunderous. And, you know, that's just a bit of filter, a bit of uh, envelope for a bit of snap. And, you know, we're already hearing a very impressive sound. So I suppose at this point, we should probably take a look at the filter because the filter is quite unique and really allows you to pick out some beautiful harmonics. So usual thing, sawtooth into the Moffett filter. This is just oscillator two, so. almost has that kind of four pole blat, but it's not, it's a two pole. And this is uh, designed by a chap called Keith Moffat, who's one of the uh, engineering teams at Midas. And he's done a really interesting job with this. So we start to bring a bit of, gotta watch the level here. 
It's almost got that MS-20 style vibe. It starts to really crunch up. And then if we just... We're picking out these... We've got like loads of bass, but you can also hear it because quite often uh, with analog synths, you get all that bottom end, but you don't get any of the upper mids, so you can't sort of detect what the notes are. But this is just a single oscillator. Sounds really nice, I have to say. I mean, there are multi modes, we've got a high pass filter as well. Add some resonance in. Bring that up to. Uh, Oops. And obviously, we can modulate that directly with the filter, uh, with the LFO. Try the band pass. Again, just really nice. And then we can adjust it even more. That wasn't enough bottom end. Again, you know, <laughs> what strikes me about this is bass, 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 and bass. But it's not just a bass synth, it's just it's capable of giving you all of that. And those harmonics you can pluck out just feel really nice. And that's what's so surprising about the filter. It being a two-pole filter, yet it still can do this amazingly high resonant sort of super bassy vibe. So, um, yeah, I'm getting a bit lost there in that. So, uh, and that's just with a sawtooth in it. You know, we start to get a bit of that going on, a bit of pulse width. Then we start to drive it. Take that down a bit. Affect the tone. Lovely stuff, eh? The other thing you'll probably notice about this is I'm introducing some envelope depth on the filter and it really... These filters are super snappy. Because they're analog, really fast, snappy, kind of attack portion and the decay. So yeah, the thing about these envelopes, because they're analog, we do get quite a lot of kind of nice scaling at the top end so that we can get that really whippy, great for drums and percussion, that kind of thing. Um, let's take a look at the uh, LFO now. And uh, you'll notice that I've changed things up a bit. I've taken the MIDI out input in and I'm just running from CV and gate. So I've got the gate of the uh, key step going into the trigger of envelope one and the pitch of oscillator two. So let's just get a bit of mod depth. Get a bit closer. Quite slow. Right up into audio rates and the shape we can we can blend between them like we do with the VCOs. Uh, this can be switched into a switch mode, so you don't have to have it like this. You can actually have it so that it'll step if that's what you'd prefer. So you've got sine, triangle, ramp down, square, ramp up. If you want sample and hold, that's where you get the patch bay going. So come back to this. Uh, uh, I'm going to get a patch cord here. I'm going to come out of the sample and hold output and go into the frequency mod in. So, so now we've got a separate sample and hold. And we can affect the glide of that as well. Get a bit of delay going on. Very nice. I guess if we wanted to um, sum those together, we could take the sample and hold out and go into the input of sum in 1A. 
sum in 1b from the LFO here. So that means now we can come out of sum 1 and go into frequency mod. So we get both of those. So now we've got the sample and hold and the LFO summed into the mod depth. So that's where we start to see that that patch bay really starts to kind of add because we've got this summing so we can take two signals, add them in, we've also got the attenuators, that side of things. Um, I should also mention the reason that I've got the MIDI output coming out is because in standard mode the uh, LFO will sync to incoming clock. So that means I couldn't get up into high rate. So I'm going to unplug all of these out a sec, take all of these out apart from my uh, gate input. And there's a really nice trick which if we get this really high, we can get this to talk. So the LFO goes high enough to do that sort of talking filter and the talking filter, those vowel sounds are when you're attenuating the amount of mod depth that goes into the filter. Nice little touch. Uh, another thing I should mention, it's also possible to loop the envelope. We can come out of LFO 1, uh, or the LFO rather, and go into the trigger of envelope 2. So now... We're looping, we're triggering, sorry, the envelope from the LFO out. So that means that's the depth. So if we get the... We can get the same sort of talking filter effect from the LFO triggering the uh, external gate input. So, I mean, if we were to hook this up to an so external gear, uh, we could trigger that envelope and effectively make it loop, although it doesn't loop sort of internally, if you see what I mean. So also worth mentioning that we can actually key sync the LFO as well. So tr note on will trigger a new cycle of each one, which is quite handy for rhythmic stuff. Now, uh, I'm just gonna get another sound up here because uh, we did hear the delay a little bit there and I wanted to bring that into the mix again. So this is the sound. Now I'm gonna bring the delay up. Very crunchy. get some really nice when you get it to the full relate full full amount starts to get a bit crunchy and a bit noisy but we can get that kind of uh, random delay stuff. Nice thing that you can do is you can modulate the delay time as with many things on the patch bay. So let's see how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, LFO output here and I'm going to go into attenuator 2 input and I'm going to come out of attenuator 2 and into the delay time in. modulate this from the LFO. But what I think I might do is get a really short one and try and get some sort of chorus vibe. But Let's try a bit of square wave. So a lot of fun you can have just modulating the day. There is one little thing, uh, the delay doesn't quite fully turn off. You do get a little bit of bleed. So even if the, the, the mix is right down, you get a little bit out there. The way to get around this is just to turn the time right down and obviously keep the feedback down. Uh, shame, but I guess it's not a deal breaker. Uh, so we should actually look at the patch bay close up uh, while we're here. Uh, we've got oscillator one and two output uh, inputs, control voltage, and a combined invert in. 
uh, oscillator one and two output, oscillator mix output, shape modulation, pulse width modulation for both oscillators, uh, VCF uh, outputs, uh, overdrive output, VCF in, frequency mod, uh, all the usual stuff. Uh, the other thing that are kind of useful are, we've got a LFO unipolar mode, which is very handy if you want to do a particular uh, unipolar out, sample and hold clock, LFO rate modulation, LFO shape modulation, LFO trig. Uh, there's a mult in uh, with uh, two outputs, wherever I can see, one, one, two. Then we've got attenuator input and a control voltage for attenuator one, attenuator two in, uh, slew input, because we've got slew rate limiter, so that means we would be sort of, if we put a square wave in there, we would round off the corners. A sum, two summing engines, one A and B, so one has two inputs and two has two inputs and then the outputs here. And then there's also this assignable output. And the assignable output can be set to be oscillator 1 CV, oscillator 2 CV, note on velocity, so you can bring velocity into things like filter depth, uh, mod wheel amount and aftertouch. And to do that, you press and hold the sync button and then you just page up and down with the plus or minus and you see the light tells you which option you've got selected. And there are a few of these little configurable possibilities, press and hold to come back into normal mode. You can, like you say, you can set these to not mix, you can set these to not mix. Uh, you can, there's various other little configurations and these are the sort of things that they're gonna be able to kind of add to when it comes to uh, software updates because of the kind of control layer is something that they can fix. And I've spoken to the engineers and there are some interesting thoughts they were having about how to maybe address individual oscillators on note ranges, you know, just kind of clever stuff like that. So we'll have to see what happens with the final uh, production. I mean, I think we're very close to the finished product here, but as we know, sometimes that last little bit can take a little bit longer than you anticipated. And we're told uh, it's going to be coming on stream in April sometime, whether that's the beginning or end, I'm guessing it's the end because we're nearly at April now, or it might be in April by the time this review comes out. But the bottom line is the price. It's $300, around about 300 UK pounds. Uh, and that is, is quite amazing, really. The, this amount of synthesizer that sounds this good, because it does sound good, that make no bones. I mean, yes, it can be a bit angry and hot, but that the character of the filter and the character of those oscillators just really do find a space. It's very musical. So I think they've done a really good job with this. You know, it's not trying to be something else. It is a neutron. And that's what I really like about it. It's got character. It's got all of those things. So if you're looking for something to get you started, or maybe you want to try out your hand and a little bit of modular action, but don't want to get into the whole kind of case, for 300 bucks, it's kind of hard to argue against this as a possible candidate for your cash. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.